The Italian contribution to the Second World War has been generally discussed with reference to Mussolini's support for the Nazi war effort and his own bungled attempts to recreate the Roman Empire in North Africa. What has often been overlooked is the involvement of Italian military forces in the war in the Far East. Of particular interest were the Italian efforts to defend their possessions in the Far East following the overthrow of Mussolini in September 1943, which led to Italy changing sides and which placed its Far Eastern forces in a confrontation with Japanese forces which led to open hostilities. Following the conclusion of the Boxer Rebellion in China in 1900, Italy, along with many other European nations, was granted international concessions in China, and in order to secure their trade rights in Asia and to protect their interests in common with other nations, Italy stationed troops close to their cantonments and maintained a small naval presence in the Far East. The Italians had been granted concessions in Beijing, Shanghai and Tianjin and these areas had been governed under the direct sovereignty of Rome since 1901. Naturally, a special military force was required to protect Italian interests in China. Although Japan had begun their conquest of China in 1931, the international concessions were not attacked or occupied by Japanese forces. On the 6th of November 1937, Italy signed the Anti-Comintern Pact, and Mussolini opened diplomatic exchanges with Japan. The Italian position in China was assured when Mussolini signed the Tripartite Pact with Germany and Japan in 1940. This placed Italy in the position of junior partner in the Axis Alliance against Great Britain, the Commonwealth and the British Empire. However, Italian military incompetence proved embarrassing for Hitler, who was forced to commit German forces to the conquest of Greece and North Africa after Italy had suffered severe defeats at the hands of Allied armies throughout 1941-42. In the Far East, the Italian garrison units were unaffected by these events because, following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941, Japanese forces were soon overwhelmed, the lightly defended colonial outposts of Hong Kong, the Dutch East Indies, French Indochina, Burma and Malaya, culminating in the humiliating surrender of British and Empire forces at Singapore in 1942. Therefore, no Allied forces remained in theatre to pose a threat to Italian interests in the region. However, this is not to say that the Japanese were happy with three areas within important Chinese cities still being firmly under the control of armed and organized Europeans. Approximately 600 soldiers and sailors with a further 100 soldiers and sailors protecting the Italian radio station at Beijing garrisoned the Italian concession at Tianjin at the time of the September 1943 armistice when Italy changed sides. The Italians also maintained consulates at Beijing, Hankou and Shanghai. Located at Tianjin were two gunboats of the Royal Italian Navy, the Lepanto and Carlotto. The naval presence in China and the Far East had been increased during April 1941, when it had become apparent to the Navy High Command that the Italian naval base at Masawa, Eritrea, then part of the colony of Italian East Africa, was going to fall to British forces. The Navy had no wish to see its vessels captured by the British, and in February 1941 they had ordered the dispatch of the colonial sloop Eritrea along with the auxiliary cruisers Ram 1 and 2 to Kobe, Japan. Ram 1 was sunk en route by the British cruiser HMS Leander off the Maldives, but the other two vessels eluded Allied patrols and arrived safely in Japan. At the time of the Italian armistice in 1943, Italian forces were split up all over the Far East. The Italians were participating with the Germans in delivering valuable cargoes of optical instruments, weapons and assorted stores to the Japanese, utilising their large submarines, which had proved disastrous when they had been employed targeting Allied shipping during the Battle of the Atlantic. Moored in Shanghai were the Italian gunboats Lepanto and Carlotto, while in Kobe, Japan, the Ram 2, now called the Kalatea 2, an auxiliary cruiser, was being refitted by the Japanese. Present also in Shanghai was the steamboat Conte Verde. 
the armistice placed Italian army and naval units based in the Far East in a dangerous situation. Italy was now fighting for the Allies, and the Italian forces had theoretically become the enemies of the Japanese. For the assorted naval vessels and their crews who now found themselves deep in enemy territory, the choice was simple. The fascist followers of Mussolini had pledged to continue the fight on the side of the Axis in northern Italy, and the Italian servicemen trapped in the Far East could have pledged their allegiance to Mussolini and fascism and sided with the Germans and Japanese, or alternatively, they could have surrendered themselves into an uncertain future at the hands of the Japanese. Many naturally chose to continue the fight against the Allies, perhaps to save themselves from internment. The Eritrea was at sea when the armistice was announced, providing support for Italian submarines, conducting the underwater trade between occupied Europe and Japan, and she steamed immediately through the Indian Ocean to Colombo in Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, avoiding the Japanese air and sea search for Italian vessels launched at the same time. Some Italian naval vessels determined to preserve the honour of the service and not allow their ships to be captured by the Japanese. On the 9th of September 1943, in Kobe Harbour, the Calatea II was scuttled. An action followed at Shanghai by the Lepanto, Carlotto and Contiverdi. The crews of these vessels were sent to prisoner of war camps and used as slave labour by the Japanese for the rest of the war, except those who continued to fight for the Axis cause on the side of the new Italian fascist state. The Japanese captured three of the remaining Italian submarines, the Capellini, Giuliani and Torelli, even though the crews had stated that they wished to continue to fight for the Axis. The crews were treated with the same brutality the Japanese had shown to Allied prisoners of war, but were eventually reprieved from this terrible situation when their former boats were handed over to the German Navy. The Germans had established a U-boat base at Penang in Malaya, and the Italian sailors continued to serve the Axis cause until the German surrender in May 1945. They crewed their former boats alongside German U-boatmen. The submarine Cagney escaped such a fate and made a dash for South Africa on learning of the armistice and surrendered to the British. Following the surrender of Nazi Germany, approximately 20 Italian submariners continued working for the Imperial Japanese Navy, and indeed the Torelli continued in Japanese service until the 30th of August 1945, stationed in Japanese home waters. The anti-aircraft gunners on board the submarine managed to shoot down an American B-25 Mitchell bomber, which ironically was the final accredited kill scored by a unit of the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Second World War. For the Italian military forces stationed on land in China, the armistice of September 1943 meant certain internment in Japanese prisoner of war camps, and surprisingly, the Japanese forces sent to disarm and round up these military forces were greeted with resistance. A small mixed army and navy force of 100 men, under the command of Lieutenant Commander Baldazzare of the Royal Italian Navy, garrisoned the Beijing radio station within the Italian concession. The Italians were likely armed with infantry weapons, consisting of the Manlisha Carcano M9138 rifle, Beretta pistols and hand grenades. Baldazzare determined to defend the radio station against a Japanese infantry regiment, numbering about a thousand men, supported by artillery and 15 light tanks. Although outnumbered 10 to 1 and lacking any heavy weapons, the Italians fought the Japanese forces for over 24 hours, enduring repeated Japanese Banzai-style human wave charges before surrendering on the 10th of September. Before doing so, Baldazzare ordered the radio equipment destroyed and all secret documentation burned. Incredibly, although the Italians at Beijing had resisted valiantly, Afterwards, the majority expressed a desire to continue to fight on the Axis side. The unexpected resistance by so small a group of Italians presumably unsettled the Japanese, whose next task was to disarm and take the surrender of the Italian garrison, the city of Tianjin. This Italian garrison presented a more formidable source of resistance than the composite force the Japanese had encountered at Beijing. 
Commander Carlo del Aqua's responsibilities were grave. Because Tianjin was a commercial centre for Italian trade with China, many Italian civilians, including women and children, sought his protection. And the Italian consul Stefanelli had withdrawn his staff and the Italian nationals under his care into an area of the concession that was fortified by Delacqua's men, consisting of the Amano Carlotto barracks, the forum, and the town hall. To defend the concession, Delacqua had some 600 soldiers and sailors under his command. The Italians were considerably better equipped than their comrades at the Beijing radio station, fielding some 300 rifles, 50 pistols, 50 Breda and Fiat light and medium machine guns, along with an ammunition supply of 2 million rounds of various calibers. Importantly, the Italians also had in place four 76mm guns, which would have proved more than a match for the tanks used by the Japanese, if utilised in the anti-tank role. Delacqua also possessed four Lancia armoured cars, which would have proved useful against Japanese infantry, and provided the Italian defence with a mobile light armoured reserve to counter any Japanese penetration of the perimeter. There was also a further five ordinary military vehicles within the perimeter. Regarding food, there was an ample supply of fresh meat, for the Italians possessed around 50 army horses, as well as having a stockpile of regular rations and medicine that would have lasted one week. Opposing the Italians at Tianjin was Lieutenant Colonel Tanaka, commanding nearly 6,000 Japanese troops, reinforced with various types of light armoured vehicles and artillery. Guns had also been deployed on the river to fire into the Italian contunement, and air support was available in the form of the Japanese Army Air Service Bomber Squadron stationed close to Beijing. Once again, the Italians were outnumbered 10 to 1, with no hope of relief. Tanaka did not attack immediately, but instead called upon Commander del Aqua to surrender. The Italian officers in charge of the defence conferred and refused to contemplate surrender. However, they knew that the Japanese forces arrayed against them would shortly be massively reinforced, and they could only hold out in a siege for a limited amount of time before they would have to surrender to spare the civilians under their protection further unnecessary suffering. The Japanese opened a brief artillery barrage upon the Italian concession in order to demonstrate the nature of the battle to come. The Italians also learned that Tanaka was shortly to be reinforced by an entire Japanese division, along with tanks and more artillery, and this persuaded many of the officers that resistance was futile. However, the great majority of the ordinary Italian soldiers and sailors wanted to fight on, but Delacqua took the difficult decision to surrender in order to save lives. The Italian garrison of Tianjin was disarmed and marched into Japanese captivity with the exception of 170 men who decided to pledge their allegiance to the new fascist Italian Social Republic after the liberation of Mussolini by German paratroopers on the 12th of September 1943. These men fought alongside the Germans and Japanese for the remainder of the war. The remainder of the Tianjin garrison was dispersed to prison camps outside the city or taken to Korea and Japan, where they suffered alongside other Allied prisoners of war until September 1945 and the Japanese surrender. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. And also, if you would like, help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.